Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very special and exciting Norwegian Cruise Line webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an Industry Relations Manager here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. The webinar will run about 40 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Derek Lloyd. Derek has been in the cruise industry since 1995 and has held various roles for multiple cruise lines over the years. First, starting with Norwegian Cruise in 2001 as Business Development Manager for Western Canada, Derek rejoined in 2006 as National and Key Account Manager, where he was eventually appointed Director of Business Development overseeing at various times the Canadian as well as Western and Northeast U.S. markets. This gave him the opportunity to be involved in all sales and business development functions in those regions, including contract negotiations, tour operator and consortia account management, as well as customer relationship development. He is now Vice President Agency Sales for North America with responsibility for the entire field and inside sales organization. And with that, take it away, Derek. Thank you very much, and I, I realize as you read that out that I probably need to cut my bio down because I, I think that was a mouthful. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, uh, you know, I know I know we're all really, really busy these days, and so for you to be able to take this time out of your schedule to hear about what all is new with Norwegian is is fantastic, and and everybody at uh, at NCL thanks you very much. So today, I, I'm, I'm hoping that most of you have joined our other webinars that we've done recently, things, you know, talking about the brand new Norwegian uh, Prima, uh, the just recently announced Norwegian Viva, all of the great new things about these ships. But today we wanted to take a slightly different approach because, you know, with everything that we've encountered over the last couple of years, we all need to change our, our focus and we all need to take a look at what is it that customers are going to be looking at um, over the next few years. And more than anything, all of our customer research and all of our booking data shows that people are looking for their bucket list destinations. Yes, they are absolutely going to be doing the seven day Caribbean fun and sun type of destinations, but more than anything, they want to go on those big trips. And so what I'm gonna focus on today is what we call our extraordinary journeys. Taking your customers to places in the world that they've only dreamt of, that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for them to experience destinations that they've only seen in books. So again, I'm gonna be talking about the extraordinary journeys. Um, I will be giving you a quick recap of our sales safe program. What makes Norwegian a little bit different for your clients? What resources do we have? And then uh, some really exciting news talking about our brand new cruise event program. <laughs> so if we take a look at what's going on in the industry today, it's really kind of it's really kind of interesting because when we look at the annual, for example, one of the reports that we got recently, it's an annual travel trends report from Amadeus. Now, these guys, they're leaders in technology, they see the booking data. And what they're seeing more than anything is that the trip of a lifetime is no longer just wishful thinking. These are not trips that people are planning on taking in the next five or 10 years. This is quite frankly, the trip that they're looking at taking over the next two years. And so we're really trying to help you become prepared for the next couple of years. Yes, we've got some extraordinary things coming up in, in, in this summer. We've got some fantastic opportunities for Alaska, for Europe and other destinations. But I want you to also look a little bit forward into 23 and into 24, because where we see great uptake on these types of trips is when you, as our travel partner, as a travel consultant, as their trusted travel advisor, puts together a group, looks at escorting it, and I'm gonna show you a couple destinations where we've had, we've had our travel partners put together groups with 100 plus cabins on some of these destinations. So, I'm just gonna take that, my, I'm, I'm gonna take my face off the screen so we can focus on, on uh, the presentation itself. So there was another article that came out recently, just actually in January from CNBC. 
So they basically said if 2021 was about domestic travel, 22 is the year of the bucket list trip. This is, and this is, again, this is one of the biggest trends that we see that all of the travel insiders that we talk to are expecting. Because, you know, and, and that's even with what we just came through with Omicron, because although Omicron was dramatic, it was brief. And what we're seeing now as we're coming out of the other side, people are ready to go. They are tired of being at home. They are tired of deferring things. And we are starting to see an incredible pickup when it comes to book booking travel. There's this new sense of urgency um, that, uh, that, that people are seeing. And there was actually a, a, a quote specifically from Abercrombie and Kent saying that guests feel that they've lost two years. And in particular, if you think about it for older clients, those who you know have maybe retired and realize that they have a finite number of years left to see the world, they've lost two of those years. And so they're looking to make it up and they're looking at making it up with a vengeance. So we're seeing a, we're, all of the, all of the um, data that we're looking at in terms of searches that are going online, et cetera, the number of searches for epic destinations are off the charts. Things like uh, people searching for places like Machu Picchu are up 50%. Tanzania up 36%. People wanting to go to Jordan to see Petra is up extraordinary. People wanting to go to Antarctica, all of these destinations. And this is, this is really what I want to talk to you about, uh, about today is what are we doing at Norwegian? Because I know for some of you who have been in the business for a while, you may think of the old Norwegian where the majority of our fleet was based in the Caribbean and the majority of our fleet was doing seven days, maybe three days, four days. But as we've expanded our fleet with the 17 ships we have today, there's a lot more opportunity that you don't necessarily know. Now, Let's talk about specifically what we call our extraordinary uh, voyages, or sorry, extraordinary journeys. So there, this, is a, this is sort of a, a destination category that we're using. And there's a couple ways that we define this. So it's really important from our perspective, what we call an extraordinary journey. And it's gotta have sort of one of the following items. So it's got to either start or end in Australia, Asia, Africa, or Oceania. It's got to be port intensive. We're also looking at trans transatlantic or trans-Pacific sailings, also generally open jaw itineraries. Those are the ones that, that quite frankly, give you a lot of port content. And we're also looking at sailings that are, you know, quite frankly, not in a heavy rotation. So not something that we're doing over and over and over um, in some of these destinations. So I'm gonna show you a quick little video here and let's see if we can get this going. So uh, this, this is by the way, available in Norwegian Central, um, which I'm gonna talk to you about a little bit later, but let me show you this video. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, let me just get back to my, there we go. Again, this is available in NorwegianCentral.com as are all of our videos. So let me get into some of the 
some of the details, some of the content of what we're what we're going to talk about today. So first off, as I mentioned before, uh, Sarah, and I'm sure you, sorry to interrupt. Yes. Uh, we are not seeing your screen yet. Okay. Are we back onto it? Not yet. We did see the video, which was great. Um, uh, let me just send you a presenter link again and see if we can get it restarted. Sure. It is showing, it does say showing screen on my, here, let me just try going back and forth one. Sorry, everyone. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Is that, okay, perfect. Excellent. So I, I guess it just needs that I need to forward along. Anyway, let me get back into this. So as I mentioned before, we've got two new ships that we've been talking about a lot lately, the Norwegian Prima and the Norwegian Viva. And one of the great things that you'll, t if you take a look at our, our fleet of ships, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit uh, later, we've got different class classes of ships. And the Prima is sort of fitting in an in-between spot. And while she's essentially almost the same size, as the breakaway and breakaway plus class ships she's carrying fewer people so we're looking at about 3300 passengers and the thing that makes this interesting is it allows us to do itineraries that we might not be able to do with some of our larger ships so it gives us a lot of flexibility here's a great example take a look at this this is this is one of our 14-day europe trips on norwegian prima so I mean, talk about a once in a lifetime opportunity on this one. So we've got, we start the cruise in Southampton. So for your clients, obviously they're gonna go, uh, uh, go over early. They're gonna spend some time in London. Our first stop is actually in Paris. So talk about, again, bucket list types of, types of destinations. And then we're off, we hit Belfast and then three stops in Reykjavik. Now, I think all of you know, Iceland is the hottest spot and it has been for a while now, but we're not just going to Reykjavik. Um, we're actually going to two other ports. First off, we're going to Isaf Jordan, and yes, I had to look that up, and we're also going to Aikieri. So both of these great opportunities to see more of the island than just Reykjavik itself. Reykjavik is this gorgeous city, really, really neat, really, really unique. But to be able to see those two other ports, you will, you're you actually able to see more of the destination of Iceland itself. So obviously this itinerary, very, very heavy on Iceland. Um, Aikieri, by the way, it's, is Iceland's second sort of major city, sits actually on the longest fjord um, in Iceland. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the fjord because I would, I would stumble horribly, but really cool sort of vibe, restaurants, cafes, very sort of artsy, it's a really neat spot. Now, of course, as I mentioned, going to Le Havre and then uh, stopping in Geringer, Olden, Stavanger before we head back to Southampton. Now, highly, highly, highly recommend is at the end of the cruise, we've got a really good um, uh, a shore excursion to see Stonehenge. So for your clients that are looking to do that, I recommend doing it at the very tail end of the trip. Next up, take a look at this. Norwegian Viva itinerary. So again, as I was saying, just because of the size of the ship, we can do sort of neat and different itineraries. Now, this one is very cool because if you take a look at it, it's open jaw. So we start in Rome, we head up to Florence. Well, we, we go to Liverno, people can go to Florence, they can go to Pisa, they can go to Lucca, they can go wherever they want. It's such a neat spot to be able to, to, to dock at. We head over to Villefranche before we actually head back and over into, uh, sorry, I realize I've gone completely backwards, um, Catacolonia, Istanbul, Mykonos, Santorini, and Athens. So we're actually visiting four countries in 10 days. Uh, and this also another really interesting part with this one is there's an overnight in Istanbul. So this one, this is actually uh, starting in June 15th. So June 15th of 2023, uh, the Viva launches and we'll be doing a series of eight, nine and 10 day trips, including including 
uh, the 10 that you see on the screen, as well as other ones from Lisbon, Venice, Rome, and Athens. So again, very, very cool. There, through her first few months, she's doing all of these unique, extraordinary journeys in Europe. Now, again, I, I go back to once in a lifetime type of trips. You really, really, when you're talking to your clients, you really, really want to make sure that you're highlighting some of these trips that they would not be able to do. And, and uh, the next one I'm going to show you is really, is really cool and very hard to pronounce. So I actually did have to look up a couple of these. But this, what you're seeing here, by the way, so this is this is uh, Kirchjefell in, in Iceland. It's actually a geothermal hotspot. Um, of course, here you're seeing the, the the Northern Lights, and of course, everything everything that people are looking at places when they go to places like Antarctica and Asia, etc. But take a look at this itinerary. So now this is on the Norwegian Star, um, and again, this is a completely once in a lifetime tri type of trip. So in this in this case, you're leaving once again out of Reykjavik, those two same spots uh, that I mentioned in um, in Iceland, so Ikeari and uh, Isa Pajorder. And then here's another, here's something that quite frankly you don't get unless you're typically going on a small expedition ship, and that's a call into Greenland. So Scorby, uh, Scors, Scoresby Sound um, in Greenland, you actually, again, unless you're going on a small 100 passenger type of expedition ship, this is really, really extraordinary, really, really unusual. And then, sorry, and I'm looking, the actual spot that we're going in Greenland is called Itoki Tormit. And yes, I probably mispronounced that, but I looked it up and I Googled it. And then we're heading up to Longyearbyen. So the Spitsbergen area, that's sort of the polar bear capital of the world. Again, you typically do not get an opportunity to go up to Longyearbyen, except if you're on a really, really tiny expedition ship. And then you don't have all of those same facilities that you would have on a ship like the Norwegian Star. Back from Longyearbyen, we're heading back down to, to Norway, Alta, Tromso, um, and actually ends in, it, it ends in Tromso. So uh, tons of neat stuff on here. Longyearbyen, it's the northernmost settlement actually in the world. So we're gonna be cruising as well, the Norwegian archipelago. Um, just so many neat opportunities here to, to go to places that your clients wouldn't normally be able to see. So now, Why, you know, why Europe with Norwegian? And there's a, there's a couple different things. One is, as I mentioned on the last slide, I think that's a perfect example. That itinerary th that you saw is typically something you would only see on really small expedition ships. Fantastic experience. However, it does not have everything that a large modern cruise ship would have. So some of the reasons why you'd want to do uh, Europe with Norwegians, for one, we've got more time to explore. So we're averaging about nine hours in port. Many, many of our itineraries, wherever possible, we have little or no sea days because we know that people, yes, they want to experience the ship. Yes, they want to have see the restaurants and see the entertainment on board. But more than anything, they want to get off of the ship and see these destinations and be able to tick them off their list and be able to say that, yes, I went to Longyearbyen, I went to Reykjavik, I went to all these places, but then come on board the ship and have a dinner at Cagney's. That's, you know, it's really kind of the best of, bo of both worlds. We're also curating a bunch of new shore excursion experiences. So we're actually uh, connecting our guests in over 70 ports with what we're calling our Go Local Shore Excursion. Uh, we're also doing things like the overnight stays. So that way you've got two full days in port. Like for example, in Reykjavik, your guests can go uh, discover the Blue Lagoon before going and, and checking out the, the nightlife in Iceland. Uh, they can, um, uh, in St. Petersburg, they can tour the Peterhof estate and then a Russian ballet experience. Again, tons of different things available to you when you do these, when you do these overnights. And then the other thing that I really, really want to point out um, is our air program. And this is something that we launched a couple years ago, has become very successful. We've, we've expanded it multiple times. So we're now uh, offering it from even more uh, cities. But with our air program, it really can be a one-stop shop. So the flights can arrive or depart one or two days before after the cruise. The flights, as much as possible, we try to minimize the stop. 
So we tend we we say that we're we're aiming for a one stop maximum on domestic flights, two stops maximum on international flights. And when you're looking at our free at sea program, we've got flights with the second guest flies for free. So please, please, please check uh, uh, check this out. Right now, we've got over 207 North American gateways in all sorts of cities. This is not just New York, Chicago, and LA. We've got multiple smaller market city airports uh, in there as well. So again, 207. You just need to go into our booking engine and and look for the uh, city that uh, that you're in. Now, one of my favorite destination destinations of the South Pacific. And, and I, I think everybody knows that we are the leaders when it comes to Hawaii cruising. Pride of America is out there year round doing seven day cruises. We, we absolutely, if you've got a client looking to do a Hawaiian only cruise, you 100% Want to come to Nor want to come to Norwegian and look at the Pride of America. There is no when you're looking at the Pride of America itinerary, there are no sea days. So it's seven days and you're in a port practically every single daylight hour. For a lot of other options to see Hawaii, you're looking at four or five days at sea. It's just not the same experience. We, without a shadow of a doubt, have the best Hawaii itinerary in the market. But as well as that, we've got a number of other South Pacific options. So for example, take a look at this one. And, and by the way, this is one of those that has done incredibly well when it comes to groups. We are seeing really, really large group bookings on destinations like this. So this is as just one example of many. This is a 12 day cruise on board the Norwegian Spirit. Now, don't forget, Norwegian Spirit actually went through a $125 million refurbishment uh, and we relaunched her in January of 2020. So, uh, she, uh, our timing was probably not great on that. However, she's going to be practically a brand new ship when your clients step on board. Again, a significant amount of money invested into refurbishing, refurbishing that ship. So, of course, start where in this case, we're starting in, in Hawaii. We're getting a chance to go see uh, uh, Maui, uh, Kauai, the Big Island before we head down to the South Pacific. So, Bora Bora, for example. So as, as you may know, uh, Bora Bora is nicknamed the jewel of the South Seas. Uh, stunning landscapes. It really, you really feel like when you're in the South Pacific, you feel like you're in a different world. You feel like, you feel like you're in a movie for one. You feel like you're stepping back in time almost in a lot of these islands. And when you're in these private little areas and private beaches, and it, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, you know, the blue lagoons, the palm trees, the vistas, it is 100% a bucket list dream of, I guarantee you, pretty much every client you possibly, you possibly have. And then we end the cruise in, in Papiete. So Papiete, of course, known for the Black Pearls, uh, world-class surfing. Um, it, uh, uh, Papiete is, is, was actually formed from uh, volcanic activity, now extinct. Um, and of course, everybody that goes there is nicknamed her the Queen of the Pacific. The capital city is very, very multicultural with a great French feel to it lots of shopping, really good crafts, et cetera. And for anybody doing a trip like this, of course, they're going to want to extend their stay. They're going to want to spend extra time uh, in Tahiti. So remember, I was talking about Bora Bora. Take a look at that picture over on the left-hand side. That is absolutely gorgeous. There, there, there is, it is probably the most photogenic part of the world is the South Pacific. And again, um, what's, what's really interesting, and as I mentioned, we did a lot with groups, these sell out very, very quickly. Um, because of a somewhat limited number that we have, um, uh, we don't have as many as we, as, we as, as we probably could. And so when you see these announced, that is the time to grab group space. And I say it over and over and over. The best time to grab group space is the day that the space is announced, because that's when the pricing is going to be the best. You grab the space, you hold it, you've got your pricing locked in. That's the way you can be successful, and that way you can go out to your clients. You've got a firm rate that you can that you can give to them, and they, you don't need to worry about you know the price changing overnight.
All right, now on to some other really, really cool destinations, uh, and that is Asia. Now, um, I, I've been fortunate enough to be over to Asia a few times. I would go back in a heartbeat. Um, we see a really good demand on uh, Asia cruises or on Asia from a cruise perspective because, you know, like with a lot of other destinations, it gives people the opportunity to see a lot in a short period of time. So, for example, places like Osaka in Japan, Bangkok, um, what's, when we take a look at our numbers um, for people that are booking uh, Asia cruises, what's kind of interesting is 40% of people that book an Asia cruise are first-time cruisers. So think about that in terms of your database. And I always say uh, our competition as cruise lines is not other cruise lines, it's land destinations. And this is a really good example. If you wanna get one of your clients hooked on cruising and they are a destination junkie, they are the people that sort of collect places to go, suggest one of these Asia cruises to them. Because again, uh, there's a number of different things, but you know, typically we're looking at we're looking at couples. About two thirds or so, sixty six percent, are over the age of fifty five. So a disproportionate number of couples, of people that are retired. We don't tend to get as many families on these types of cruises, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. They're slightly longer cruises because of the length of the journey to get there and the the once in a lifetime type of trips you tend to have people uh, uh, extend their stays. So they're doing a couple weeks maybe. Um, but again, think about your database. Think about who you could maybe target. Some of my, some of my favorite memories are, are of Japan. Um, I, I actually, the first two pictures at the top, I've actually been to, it is extraordinary. For what the, the countryside is beautiful. The culture is, is unbelievable. The people are so nice. Um, I, I desperately want to go back again. I did not get a chance to, to see much of Mount Fuji or the northern side. I really want to do that. But, you know, again, there's such unique destinations. You look at other places like the Batu Caves in Malaysia, uh, in, in, in Bali, Indonesia, which, again, is a destination I'm, I'm looking forward to go, going to. Halong Bay in Vietnam. These are all of the places that we as Norwegian can take your clients. The other thing that I want you to take a look at is take a look at the specifics of the of the itineraries. So again, I mentioned that they're they're bucket list destinations, but we really pay attention to how we build the itineraries. So again, like in Europe, we're we're putting in overnight stays in places like Tokyo and Hong Kong and Bangkok. We've got extended time in port, and then we're doing them specifically at, at times of year to give your clients something extraordinary. So we'll do the fall foliage in Japan or the cherry blossoms at the other time in the spring. We'll do, and imagine this, imagine New Year's Eve in Thailand. You know, again, when you're talking to your clients, it's people have had a chance to spend some time at home. They've had a chance to probably not spend some money. Right now, they wanna spend their money on experiences. Now, again, the Norwegian difference, and this is this is in general. So first of all, our, our guest first philosophy, and this, this is in everything that we do. When we look at how we do our itineraries, when we look at how we, how we design our ships, it's very much with a guest first mentality. So we're trying to put our guest, your client, at the front of everything. We are continuously raising our standards and these standards when it comes to contemporary cruising. We're specifically trying to design a product that is more inclusive. We don't want to be in the space of trying to sell 499 cruises. That's not what we're about. We want to be able to give you and your clients a fully inclusive itinerary that provides a great value to them and coincidentally, better commissions for you. When looking at our itineraries, know that we sail to over 300 ports across all seven continents. And that is something, again, and I've been with Norwegian for a while, it really strikes me, 300 ports around the world. 
we are very much a destination focused cruise line. And then of course we've got other unique experiences. Everybody knows I think about our, our studio state rooms for single travelers. Um, you know, we've got great family programs on the destinations that attract the, that, that market. And then the ships themselves. We've got absolutely award-winning ships. As I mentioned, we've got 17 ships in total and we've got six more coming. So the Prima launches in August of this year, the Viva launches, as I mentioned, in June of next year, and then we've got four more Prima class ships coming out after that every single year. So when we talk about extraordinary journeys now, just imagine what we're gonna be able to offer to your guests once the remainder of those six ships come out. Again, absolutely, stunning ships and 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 as you know I, and i think I, i'm hoping most of you on this call have sailed with norwegian before you know some of our differentiators certainly dining is a huge part of it norwegian spearheaded the concept of specialty freestyle dining back when we launched it in about 2000 that was not the norm the norm was first seating second seating that was it now you go on our ship and you've got options galore. You've got more specialty dining restaurants than there are nights of the cruise. Your clients can choose from everything from Los Lobos Mexican to Cagney Steakhouse to the Bistro French restaurant and everything in between. And just wait until you hear about some of the new things coming out on the Prima and on the Viva that I can't give away because that's going to be announced soon. And then, of course, the entertainment. Entertainment, very much Broadway, live music. We're very, very much about the live entertainment experiences. Theme different bars and lounges, the casino, et cetera. Tons of stuff. And, of course, for anybody who, who have sailed on the Bliss, the Joy, the Encore, you know that, and, of course, the upcoming Prima and Viva, you know that the racetrack is, is one of the most popular destinations on board the ship. Now, we can't completely ignore the fact that we have run we have uh, uh the last couple of years had a few challenges so our sail safe program on board uh, just to just to sort of touch base um so make sure that you go to ncl.com slash sail safe really really important because things are being updated all of the time um that'll that'll tell you everything that's going on aboard the ship in terms of i mean here this is an update. So as of March 1st, we just announced this recently, we welcome any children on board, vaccinated or not, age 11 and under, welcome to sail, and that's through any of our destinations. 12 and over, as well as 100% of our crew, must be fully vaccinated at least two weeks prior to departure in order to board. So there's no change to that at all. Uh, the only ch the, the change is that uh, children 11 and under uh, are welcome to sail, even if they've not been vaccinated yet. Every guest must provide proof of a negative test. Um, that can be an antigen or PCR. Um, again, if you go to ncl.com slash safe, all of the details there in terms of the timing, et cetera. And then another change as of March 1st is masking. Um, up, until, up until then, masks were mandatory on board. Uh, we are still recommending them. Uh, however, it will be at the guest discretion. Uh, some destinations, primarily Europe, and there could be others, uh, do require that masking is still done on board. So please don't tell your clients that it's 100% mask free because there will still be circumstances. And that can even be on our on our cruises leaving out of North America where to enter into one of the port facilities, mask is required. So we still got a little ways to get out of this, but it's got but but things are getting a little bit uh, a little bit better. Of course, we are making sure that we are keeping things safe on board our ships. As mentioned, all adults on our ship, 12 years and old and older, must be vaccinated. We're doing universal COVID testing and regular testing for our crew. We've significantly upgraded our, our air filtration system and increased our sanitation measures, measures rather. We've got increased and enhanced medical resources on board. And of course, we're working with our with our port uh, our, our port people as well to make sure that uh, we are congruent with all of those uh, uh, procedures. And one other thing that came out of this is we now have a dedicated public health official on board. So they will be seeing on board every single ship, making sure that all of our policies and procedures are followed, making sure that all of the cleaning and disinfectation 
disinfection measures are followed. Um, and again, just making sure that they are watching out for the health and the safety of our guests and of course our crew. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Norwegian app, especially these days, it's become a lot more handy. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you ask your clients to download this app before they sail, because there's a lot of things that you can do on the app, either before they sail or while they're on board, that will make their experience even better. Now, finally, let me just talk a little bit about the resources that we have available to you. So I mentioned it a few times, NorwegianCentral.com. This is everything NCL. Everything you can imagine about NCL is in Norwegian Central. So first off, marketing headquarters. Do you need anything at all? Do you need brochures? Do you need toolkits? Do you need flyers? We've got banner ads. We've got the videos like the one I showed you earlier. We've got an image library. You can even go in there and create a customized group flyer for the group that you're promoting. As well as on Norwegian uh, on NorwegianCentral.com, we've got NCL Help. NCL Help, as we call it, is the Google of Norwegian. If you have any questions, any at all, about anything to do with policies, procedures, uh, uh, facts about the ships, go to NCL Help and just type it in. I use it literally every single day. I think probably every single person at Norwegian uses it every single day. So this is where we keep all of our all of our information. And so rather than having to call us or having to email us, go there first and just type in your question into NCL Help. You'll be amazed by the level of detail that, that's in there. We've also got our NCL chat feature. So our chats are answered usually within seconds. And the number of people that have been using the chat feature within Norwegian Central has been going up every single month. And we're actually dedicating more people to answering that chat because we want to be able to give you the answers. So imagine you're sitting at your desk with your client. You have a quick question. You don't have to pick up the phone. Just go into Norwegian Central, type in your chat question, and it'll be answered while you're still talking to your client. So again, really, really, really important information. Please, please, please make sure that you go to NorwegianCentral.com tons and tons and tons of good stuff in there. Now, one of the things that we just launched, and this is really, really cool, is our cruise event. So how would you like to host an event to bring your clients out and show them the Norwegian product? Talk to them about these destinations. All you need to do is sign into Norwegian Central and then under the promote section, go to host a cruise event. There's a form to fill out and then we provide you all of the assets. So we'll send, we will have the, um, we will have the uh, uh, flyers available to you. We'll have the presentations available to you coming soon. Um, we've got tons of different stuff for you to be able to host a cruise event, whether it be a live one in your office or at your home or wherever, or virtually. So again, please make sure you go in. And again, it's under the promote section in Norwegian Central. Really, really handy. And this is brand new, as in like in the last, in the last week. We've got our NCL travel blog. Do you want content? Do you want details? Do you want to simply be able to talk about destinations you haven't maybe been to yet? Check out the travel blog. It's written in a really, in a really great way. It gives you a lot of detail. It gives you a lot of colorful stuff to be, to be able to describe these destinations to people. That's ncl.com slash travel blog. And then talking about promotions, or sorry, talking about um, uh, 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 education, NCLU. NCLU is a fabulous program that we've got, and we are adding courses all the time. So you can go in there and learn about the new Norwegian Prima and the Norwegian Viva and our free at sea promotion and everything to do with all of our ships and our destinations. Anything we've got, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens of courses in there for you to get up to speed. And especially right now, you need to be experts. Clients are looking for a helping for, for somebody to hold their hand. And the more that you come across as the expert in what you're selling, the more likely they're going to be booking with you. And then finally, let me just talk to you about the current promotions that we've got out there. So right now, of course, our free at sea program. Our free at sea program, I think you've you've probably um, uh, uh, you certainly hopefully have experienced it by now. So free at sea includes all five offers open bar, specialty dining, free shore excursions, free Wi-Fi, free extra guests, 
And as I mentioned earlier, we've also got the free air for second for the second guest. Now, I'm going to issue you a little bit of a challenge. Now, uh, I think you all know that over the last two years, clients have been issued a lot of FCCs. You can actually go to Norwegian Central and download a report that shows you all of your clients that are, are currently holding FCCs. These are people with free money. They've got money to spend with Norwegian. They don't actually have to put anything on their visa because they've got an FCC. What I'm challenging you to do is contact three clients with outstanding FCCs. They expire at the end of this year, so you want to encourage your clients to, to, uh, uh, to use them. So go to marketing headquarters, go to the destination tool toolkit, and then pull some of these extraordinary journeys. Give them to these three clients that are looking for, for, for a summer vacation. Um, now, uh, uh, finally, I want to say we've got on March 10th, and I sort of dropped some hints to this, we've got our next partner's first webinar with Norwegian Prima and Norwegian Viva Reveals. And then the last thing is the best way for you to be able to sell our ships is for you to get on our ships. We've done a number of seminars at sea uh, throughout the, the first half of this year. We've also got our NCLU reduced rate program. You can receive up to a 50% reduced rate on select cruises. If you, All you need to do is go through the program, graduate to a PhD level, and you get 50%. At every level, you get a discounted amount. So please, please, please reach out to us, help us, help you. Um, you know, we've invested a lot of money in making sure that we answer the phones in four seconds. Literally, we have spent millions of dollars to make sure that we've got the staffing so that when you call us, we're there and we're there quickly. We don't want you sitting on hold. So please call us. In, in the first nine months of 2020 alone, we handled over 600,000 travel partner calls. We continue to advertise in markets across uh, the US and Canada. We want to drive people to you. We want to be your partner. And you know, I, I, I would just say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for all of your, all of your support. Now, Anna, I think I'm three minutes over. That is totally fine. That was a lot of great information. So thank you for all of that. And we do have some questions coming in if you're ready to take them. Excellent. Absolutely. Perfect. Our first one is from Christina, who is wondering if kids clubs are still available on board. Um, so our kids clubs, please call us on the specific voyage. Our kids clubs will be available. Um, we are bringing them back online over a period of time, depending on the ship and the destination. So if you give our, give our uh, guest uh, services team a call, they'll be able to give you, if you've got a specific question about a specific sailing. But absolutely, the intent is our children's programs will be uh, back to full, full capacity soon. Okay, understood. Our next question is from Camille, who is wondering if you have any information or updates on stops in St. Petersburg. Um, you know, uh, uh, as of right now, we still have St. Petersburg on our itineraries. Uh, the situation with, with uh, Russia and Ukraine is obviously quite fluid. We are um, certainly very hopeful and optimistic that it will be solved positively. Um, but as of right now, we don't have anything definitive that we could that we can say. Okay, got it. Our next question is from Janine, who is wondering if the specialty restaurants on board can do a takeout program. A takeout program. That's an interesting idea. Um, I don't. I, I'm not right now that I know of. I know in the Haven, if you're in the Haven, you can order from uh, some of the specialty restaurants, but I don't think we've got that as a general program, but that's actually a neat idea. The funny thing is, I think over, you know, over the last two years, so many restaurants have developed great takeout programs that it's almost, like it's almost the norm now. Um, I will, I'm making a quick note, I will bring that back to some of the um, internal team and see what the thoughts are. I like the idea. Okay, great. Our next question is from Tina, who knows that a lot of cruise lines don't go to Bora Bora anymore and is wondering if the NCL spirit is definitely confirmed going there. Yeah, I think, you know, again, that's one of those things where I would say there's a there's a fluidity to it. I know that a number of destinations in the South, South Pacific 
um, implemented some restrictions in terms of ships that can call and ships that uh, can uh, embark or disembark. Right now, we are planning on going to Bora Bora, um, uh, and we're taking a look at that situation. You know, it's 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 you know, it's one of those things that. Um, and, and somebody else mentioned it in, in uh, Cruise Week not too long ago, where whereas before we would look at things 18 months, 24 months down the road, right now our, our vision has to be so close in because things change so quickly. So we are um, uh, 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 very optimistic about South Pacific. Okay, great. And our next question is from Leandra, who is wondering if in Norwegian Central there is a way to search for sea day intensive cruises. Sea day intensive cruises. Um, well, if you go into Norwegian Central, um, uh, what you would do is you could go into to the booking engine and take a look at look for you know typically the cruises that have the most sea days would be the transatlantics or the transpacifics. So what you can do is filter by length of cruise. Um, so look at something, and, and also those tend to happen at certain times of the year. There's not a specific way to say, show me cruises that have you know, five or more sea days. But again, if you, if you looked at those ones in particular, you'd probably see more of them. Okay, that makes sense. And we have just a few more questions. We sure. have a lot of people that are really excited about seminars at sea and are wondering if you can repeat how uh, they can get more information on those. Uh, with seminars at sea, just simply contact your sales manager. Um, if you don't know who that is, just email to tasalesupport at ncl.com. That's TA as in travel agent, sales support at ncl.com. Okay, perfect. And Virginia is wondering, when we finish the NCLU courses, can we use our travel agent diploma towards the new Prima and Viva ships? Uh, as of right now, uh, those ships, I believe, are excluded, but that tends to change over time. As new ships come out, uh, it, it, we usually will restrict the newest ship. So as of right now, no, but keep an eye on it. Okay, perfect. We'll keep our eyes and ears open. And this is our last question from Barbara, who is wondering if NCL has any thoughts about going to Galveston, using Gal the Galveston port in the future. Yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, the Norwegian Prima. Uh, so Norwegian Prima comes out in August of this year. So she's starting doing a bunch of really cool um, European itineraries and then coming over to North America, including a Galveston to Miami sailing. Um, and the reverse, I believe, spending the winter in Port Canaveral before heading back to, to Europe. However, the following winter, so the winter of 23-24, she's actually going to be home ported in Galveston. So we will have a brand new ship in Galveston for most of the 23-24 winter season. And a really cool itinerary too, I think four ports, which is unusual for, uh, for cruises out of Texas. Very exciting. And yes. those are all of our questions. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining. And thank you, Derek, for all of that information. All right. Thank you very much, Anna. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great afternoon. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Bye.